All right, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to Real Madrid Hub again. I'm your host, Dr. Hota. And yes, the derby is over, but the controversy continues. And let me tell you, let me explain you really quick why is this happening. Because after a super hot Atletico Madrid Real Madrid, the things are not cooling down that easy. I mean, it's going to take some time for everybody to forget, for everybody to look through for everybody to try to be more focused on the next game the next match day rather than the Atletico de Madrid Real Madrid and all the things that were left right because there were more controversy more words more uh, controversial statements you know more stuff right so for example regarding to Diego Simeone let me remind you what he did after the game he literally refused to greet Carlo Ancelotti after the game going straight through to the tunnel. I mean, he didn't even look at Carlo Ancelotti. He didn't even shake his hand. And that is because Simeone was so upset last night. He wasn't happy at all. I mean, if you listen to the press conference, if you see what he said, it is basically a person who is proving everybody that he's so mad, he's not okay with anything, and of course, he's trying to harm, he's trying to diminish the victory of Real Madrid all the time, saying the way we won, it was the same way they are very used to play, but when they play that way, they get criticized, they get blasted, they were, I mean, they get all the things, right? So he was basically super mad, super freaked out, and he didn't even, or he wasn't even able to articulate a single phrase without remembering how the victory of Real Madrid was looked like, or was like, or Real Madrid victory, um, on the way we won, it was not fair, because we were trying to copy what they normally do, things like that, right? I mean, he sounds really, really bitch man <laughs> really he's bitching all the time he's complaining about everything so that's why i didn't like to hear i mean i i i get it i understand when you are annoyed when you are freaked out because you lost the derby and all the stuff it is understandable man but you have the maturity enough to overcome this kind of things and be able to give a normal press conference like yeah we lost the game that's it Real Madrid was better than us that's it there's no more stuff to talk about right there's that's it I mean super simple right well apparently for uh, Simeone it's a little bit more difficult what is not understandable at all it is this right the image from people the picture uh, I mean specifically this guy here in the picture you know with a puppet of a monkey trying to make fun and mocking Vinicius as well in a very racist way this is racism this is xenophobic right what pedro rodriguez pedro bravo or whoever it is said the other day is not specifically racism i think that it was a misunderstood right because it is true in spain when you say don't do the monkey it is like don't do stupid things right don't do dumb things don't be silly you know, that is the, the real meaning in Spain, right? Is It has nothing to do with racism, monkeys, or stuff like that, right? And to me, honestly, I don't think the guy really wanted to call a uh, monkey to Vinicius Jr. at all. I mean, in Spain, that phrase is a completely different story and has nothing to do with racism, right? I mean, I, I tell my daughter um, every day, pretty much every day, don't do the monkey. Don't do monkey things, right? Because that is very, very normal in Spain, right? I mean, that I mean, it has nothing to do with racism, and uh, but this guy showing and you know waving a waving a puppet of a monkey, that is racism because it's clearly something that is addressing to Vinicius Jr. Something that is pointing straight towards Vinicius Jr. Calling him monkey. That is a completely different story, and this is racism and this i mean against this we have to act all of them i mean all of us right la liga the spanish federation the authorities every single person has to chase this guy and say okay you did this perfect now you are going to be fine you're going to pay a ticket you are going to be in 
jail, whatever, because you are a racist, right? And that is very true. This is a racism gesture. This is racism, okay? So let me clarify the couple of things that are or have been misunderstood here. Okay, what Dani Alves said the other day, it is not true. Not all the Spaniards, we are racist at all. At all. The most of the people here in Spain are not racist, right? But guys like this guy is a stupid. It's a stupid. It's, a, it's an asshole, right? Is it probably a racist? A racist, right? And he should be in jail or at least to be fined or pay a ticket. So the next time you think about that. But anyways, we're not, I think that we're not going to get anything because these guys are, you know, inundate, literally inundate the soccer in, in Spain, unfortunately. Yeah, and another thing that I have for you all guys is this message from Rodrigo Gores. He literally smashed and blasted to Atletico de Madrid players because what he said is basically they talked a lot. We showed them who we are. I mean, that is the point. Like we say in Spain, Real Madrid only has to speak on the field. You don't have to speak anywhere else. You have to have the guts, you have to have the courage, you have to have the, the bravery to show up on the field and talk there. Because talk is cheap. Talk is really cheap. And Rodrigo Goes knows this pretty well, right? So apparently, Atletico Madrid players really don't know who were they playing against. And they are playing against the king of Europe, right? So they thought it was going to be a good idea to talk about, I mean, to talk a lot before the game about Vinicius, dancing and all the stuff. But when you are facing off the king of Europe, you know what is going to happen. You know what is next, right? You know that. So I don't know. But in my opinion, this guy really, I mean, these guys have screwed it up and straight all the way down. I mean, they did a horrible job talking all the time, trying to diminish Real Madrid, trying to look him, I mean, trying to look us down, which is worse. So yeah, they got what they deserve, right? And now Real Madrid is again topping the standings and we, we're not going to spend or waste our time in talking, talking, talking. We are going to spend our time playing and winning, playing and winning. That is what we do. And this is how we do that. So learn the lesson because the hard lessons as usual never come cheap okay so another thing i have for you all guys very interesting let me share with you all really quick and i'm i'm gonna talk about Kylian Mbappé to talk about something different because the derby is over and nothing else has to be said but Kylian Mbappé let me tell you something Mbappé demanded to PSG not to play in the right wing when he renewed his contract. I mean, as you know, L'Equipe, the French newspaper, is unveiling a lot of details of the last contract of Kylian Mbappé with PSG. And now we know that the player never wanted to play in the right wing. And that is what he asked for in his last contract. I mean, it was a condition to put at the contract. He said, OK, I'm going to renew my contract, but of course, I'm not going to play at all. I mean, I'm not going to play at all, okay, in the right wing because that is not my side. My side is the left wing and I'm not going to play in the right. So another reason for us not to sign Kylian Mbappe is that because we don't need another left winger because we already have two Vinicius Jr. and Kylian Mbappe would be a big trouble, would be a big problem, right? So that's why we don't need anymore to Kylian Mbappe and there's no a big necessity for Real Madrid to sign this player at all, at all, okay? So if you understand this, you will understand as well why Florentino Perez now is not quite sure about going ahead and try to sign Kylian Mbappe because it is really not necessary considered necessary considering the players we are building up considering Vinicius Jr. is growing Rodrigo Goes is growing um, Fede Valverde is ex exploding literally and uh, so yeah we don't need him we don't need him anymore right so uh, 
My opinion is, why would you put this guy on the right wing or left wing of Real Madrid when you already have players that are good enough or even better than Kylian Mbappe? There's no point for me, right? So hopefully Florentino Perez look at that the same way than me and we don't sign the player. I think that in order for us to improve a little bit the attack, we only need the number nine like Erling Haaland. That's it. That's the only thing we are in need of, in my opinion, okay? So we might even... We might even... Uh, not sign any other player and still be good enough to win everything so i don't know how the evolution of benzema over the next two years is going to be but my opinion is for now we don't need any other player in Madrid. but let's see what happens because it is not easy to take this kind of decision and of course it's going to be problematic considering the player will want to play in Ramadan in the future. At some point, he will show up again and we will be talking about Kylian Mbappe again and all this stuff. So let's see what happens and uh, what we can do about that. So for now, guys, this is what I have for you all. I'm going to upload two more videos talking about more news because we have more stuff coming in and, of course, as important as usual, okay? So I'm going to see you in the next video.